Hi, my name is Victoria and I am school captain from St George's Road Primary School. I am really excited for this Nelson Mandela Summit because it builds up networks, leadership and confidence. Victoria, what makes you optimistic? I just don't look in at the down things of life and I get a lot of support from my family members, my friends and my teachers and my mentors. Why should people come to this summit? Because you're going to experience a whole lot of different things and it'd be a great way to become more optimistic. Hmm. What would you like to tell everyone? What makes you optimistic? By coming to the summit, it will be a great way for you to start being more optimistic. At the moment, life is very different to what we are used to. The current global pandemic has radically changed the world around us. Particularly as a young person, thinking about the future can be daunting. However, we need to remember that decisions made by today's leaders will have a huge impact on how we live the rest of our lives. That is why it is vital that we, as young people, engage in these decisions with optimism and strength. On Tuesday the 15th of September, the third Nelson Mandela Youth Leadership Summit will take place. The theme of this year's summit is young people leading with optimism through the pandemic and beyond. We are encouraging young people to come together and talk with leaders from the fields of science, commerce, business, education and diplomacy. The exceptional array of guest speakers include Dr Amanda Caples, Victoria's lead scientist, Michael Klein, the US Consul General to Melbourne, Andrew Compton, the State Director of the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, Karen Sobels, the President at the Victorian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Ken Murray, Educator and Campus Principal at the Wanganui Campus of the Great Shepherd and Secondary College, Margaret Hepworth from the Gandhi Experiment, and Victor Purton, the Chief Optimism Officer from the Centre for Optimism. We're inviting you to learn from their experiences, hear what they have to say on the topic of leadership and optimism, and to offer your own insights as a young leader. As young people, we can utilise our passion and optimism to help pave the path forward. We are the next generation of thinkers, leaders and activists. And through the Nelson Mandela Youth Leadership Summit, we have the opportunity to actively participate in these discussions. Have your voice heard and sign up today. Hi everyone, uh, Ken Murray, uh, Wanganui Campus Principal of the Greater Shepparton Secondary College. I think if I was to create a, a better world, I'd want three key ingredients. It'd be youth, leadership, and optimism. So I think when you bring those together, it does create something pretty special. Um, I'm enjoying a rare opportunity to be in the outdoors today in the sunshine without a mask and some of those simple pleasures that we've not become accustomed to lately. Uh, I look forward to those returning and, and, and we will and go back to those things that we, that we do enjoy. The Nelson Mandela Youth Leadership uh, Summit coming up shortly brings together a diverse range of people, some young, some not so young, but with one common trait and that is optimism. I'll be involved in the day and I'd encourage you to do the same. Look, we're all busy people and it, it takes two hours and you could probably find other things to do in that two hours, but I'd encourage you to, 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 to tune in, to get involved and then, you know, potentially you're, you might ignite a passion within you and, and find something that goes on to make Greater Shepherd and Victoria, Australia and in the world a better place to be in. I look forward to seeing you then. Thanks. Hey everyone, so my name is Anna Somali and I just want to talk to you guys about the upcoming Youth Summit organised by Future Voices and the Gandhi Experiment coming up this 15th of August, 10am Australian East Coast time. So this year's theme is titled Young People Leading with Optimism Through the Pandemic and Beyond. And honestly, as a young person studying online in these unexpected times, it is quite difficult to stay motivated and optimistic about the future. However, as a Future Voice alumni, I just want to talk to you guys about Future Voices and how it had solidified my passion to study law. So just like any other young person, you attend school and to some extent you have an idea on what you want to become. But just like the majority of us, you don't like experience, you like experience, you have no idea how to get there, you like connections, and you just don't have experience in the industries you want to work in. However, with the program, you'll be exposed to various industries, people, 
opportunities, and most importantly, you will acquire knowledge and skills that will um, fundamentally prepare you for the future. I cannot emphasize that enough. So if this interests you, come along and participate within the Youth Summit and hear from prominent leaders and speakers, such as Dr. Amanda Caples, Victor Perton, Margaret Hepworth, Kaylin Sobbles, Consul General Michael Kieran, and Andrew Cuffston. So hope to see you there. Bye for now. Right now, the world is very different to what we are used to. The global pandemic has changed life as we know it. As a young person, I know that it can be particularly daunting to think about the future. But decisions made by today's leaders will continue to impact our lives for years to come. That's why it's so important that we continue to engage with those decisions with strength and with optimism. On Tuesday 15th of September, the third Nelson Mandela Youth Leadership Summit will take place. The theme for the summit is young people leading with optimism through the pandemic and beyond. We encourage you to come together with leaders in the fields of science, diplomacy, business, commerce and education to learn from them and give your own insights. The exceptional array of speakers for the event include Karen Sabals, President of the Victorian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Dr. Amanda Kappels, Victoria's lead scientist, Michael F. Klein, the USA Consul General of Melbourne, Andrew Cumston, State Director of the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, Ken Murray, educator and campus principal at the Wanganui campus of the Greater Shepparton Secondary College, Margaret Hepworth from the Gandhi Experiment, and Victor Purton, the Chief Optimism Officer for the Centre for Optimism. Learn from their experiences, hear what they have to say, and give your own insights as well. As young people, we can utilize our passion and optimism to help pave the path forward. We are the next generation of leaders, thinkers and activists. And through the Nelson Mandela Youth Leadership Summit, we have the opportunity to actively participate in these discussions. Sign up today and have your voice heard. Hi guys, it's Aaron Mishano here. I'm the chairman and CEO of Leaders of Tomorrow Group. We're actually an organization that's really passionate about empowering, equipping and connecting entrepreneurs, young and old, to help them fulfill their dreams by serving through projects uh, that help the community as well. So I'm really grateful for being able to uh, be invited into this summit and uh, wanted to maybe share with you guys my gratitude and uh, congratulations to all the uh, young attendees that have invested the time during these new times, uh, just to learn a little bit more about leadership um, and also attend and connect with other people, mentors, and uh, you know, just be in an environment that's a bit more positive around the Nelson Mandela Regional Youth Summit. So just wanted to acknowledge you guys for doing that and to say that you're really, really special uh, to make the time to do that because in this time, a lot of people may be hanging out and complaining about what's happening. And some people have been very badly affected by this uh, pandemic. But all that to say, not uh, putting any uh, or dismissing any of those uh, situations because it's been very difficult for all of us. It's really, really good to uh, at least make a different decision to get around some people who maybe have solutions, some positive insights, and just to mingle and share ideas like you guys are doing at the summit. So you are a very rare person and I wanted to say congratulations for attending and please, please, please make the effort uh, to attend. So a uh, little bit about me and I guess maybe why I was invited to uh, share a few things and answer some questions uh, with you. Um, I was a refugee asylum seeker who migrated to Australia at the age of 16. And so maybe perhaps I have a little bit of experience in 
you know, some of my friends who came with me and myself, and I guess what they say to the, to the uh, question of what makes me optimistic is that from my experience, I've just learned that, you know, it's one thing to be very practical. It's another thing to be very realistic. And it's another thing to be very positive and optimistic because if I was to be just practical and maybe negative, I may still have been uh, left in my home country of Zambia where uh, everyone told me I wouldn't amount to much. And, you know, I was raised in a, a family where we didn't have a lot of resources. And so if I use that as a decision to be either realistic and say, well, if nobody else around me has changed, and then maybe nothing is going to be good that's going to happen for me as well. Chances I wouldn't be here living in Bali as an uh, executive business coach running six companies in five continents. The thing that got me there, my friends, is optimism. I, lucky for me, had friends and had mentors that really believed in me a little bit more and then basically told me I could do more slow, a little by little every day. And so for me, I really think that optimism really matters. And that's one of the biggest secret ingredients I've had that's led to my success uh, in the last uh, years after I was 16. So what are the biggest uh, issues that maybe, um, you know, needing uh, young people to step up? Uh, to be honest, it's a very hard question. I think young people now, and like when I was growing up, have a lot more distractions, a lot more options in life. And I think uh, maybe counter to what other people might advise, uh, I've come to come across some research that actually works in my business where we found that, you know, if you, for example, have a tennis ball and throw it to a younger person, they can probably focus on one thing and catch it, right? So imagine the tennis ball is a metaphor for opportunities now let's just say now i give you 10 tennis balls and i say hey you want all 10 and you're like sure i would love to make more money i would love to have more friends i'd love to have more jobs i'd love to have more businesses and then i throw all 10 at the same time at you what's going to happen you're probably not going to catch any ball and this is a sad reality i think for one of the biggest issues i find in the young people today is that because of our social media facebook smartphones computers access to internet we have so much opportunity and ideas bombarding us at the same time and i think what leaders need to step up into is maybe getting some guidance around how to focus on one thing that's right it's very very hard to do and i think it's a good thing i'm a big believer in having many many passions but the sooner you can get to focusing on what you want to do in your life know how you want to make money in your life and then what skills you think you might need to be successful in that particular craft area business uh, position co job call it what you want and then just try and focus on that one thing i think that's going to help a lot so hopefully we can share more of that the third is how do you know uh, how does my leadership actually help me when i was young set me up in today well for me i think what was my biggest saving grace my friends is uh, one of the biggest things I think young leaders need is a sense of curiosity. That's being able to be excited about anything that is different to you. So it might be, you know, if you're from African background like me, I was super curious about how Aboriginals lived. I was curious about how the Western world worked. So I wanted to travel to those places and go experience it for myself. I was also curious about people who maybe had different situations to me. You know, I grew up as a farm boy in, in Zambia, Africa. And yet I met other people who were city people, you know, they, they did different things. Or I might have watched a movie and was inspired by someone who just did something that was just so foreign out of my world. But I was very, very curious. So I think one of the biggest things young people can do as a, as a person is step back and get very curious about things that are different. Don't judge them too quickly. And if you're young, try and do more new things and just have a little bit of courage to understand that you're going to make a lot of mistakes but it's in those mistakes that you actually learn. So I really hope some of you guys can get something out of that. And the last part is what would young people uh, need to study, I think, to do what I do? Um, I guess for me, it's a funny one. Uh, one of the biggest lessons I think I have that have helped me in my success today in, in business, at least in leadership, I'm coaching that at the moment, is just telling people to, again, study, you know, biographies of the great people, you know, get interested in things like social skills, get interested in negotiation skills, get interested in understanding your own personality and what makes you tick, what are your strengths or weaknesses, get interested in conflict resolution. How do you overcome 
a negative situation, maybe you get into an argument with a friend or a teacher or a leader or a parent, how can you use the right tools to influence that situation so it doesn't become very negative for you? And I think the last one is I think as a young person, I was always interested in reading. And I don't know if we can count that as study, but I think it's one thing to go to school and get a good education, and I'm a big believer in that. But, you know, I have a son. I think if I were to give him advice, I would rather if I had everything taken away, including his school, what is the one thing I'd want him to study? I would want him to study the ability to learn. I would really want him to know how to learn. So what I mean by that is it's one thing to go get a curriculum and the teacher gives you mathematics and you have to read the book and repeat what he said. It's another thing for you to go study how the brain works in terms of how you retain information. It's another thing in speed reading maybe. It's another thing in how to have comprehension skills, how to translate that information so you can communicate it to your friends and others. These other parts is what I feel education is all about, which is to induce from within gifts, being able for you to learn how to study any field, any time, and be able to command confidence because you actually understand things at the root issue. So this is beyond schooling, my friends, or at least formal education. I've learned this, unfortunately, later on in my life about the ability to be able to learn. And what that did for me is it allowed me then to get curious, if you remember that, to go back into being able to learn anything about any topic. And that served me so well in business because no matter whether there's a trend in business, technology and programming, I know how to learn. I follow a system of how to do that. If I want to learn about a new language, I know how to learn and have a system to, to follow to do that. So I really hope that inspires you guys to get curious about that. And if you have any questions for me about anything, I'll be hopefully at the summit able to uh, introduce a few people. But later on, I'd love to connect with you guys on uh, chats if we have the opportunity or on social media afterwards. So I wish you the very, very best on the summit as well. Uh, and uh, really, really wanted to congratulate everyone and encourage you guys to really sign up and join this event because you'll be able to meet with people who can really help you grow and deal with some of the situations or difficult times that we're in, but how to basically turn the lemon into lemonade so that you can seize that opportunity and look back maybe five years from now when the pandemic is gone and say, I'm so glad I attended this event because I got the skills I needed to become a great leader. So I wish you all the success. Thank you very much. It's Aaron Machado here. G'day, my name's Matthew Walker, I'm a senior constable at the Shepparton Police Station. My role is a multicultural liaison there. Uh, today, Caitlin's going to ask a few questions. What makes you an optimistic? Well, over the past sort of, seeing the change I guess, in the past 10 years, um, I've seen a, a massive shift towards multiculturalism, uh, gender equality, um, as well as workplace fairness. What are the big issues needing young leaders to step up? Okay, that is an excellent question and one that probably many, many people could try and answer. But I guess um, if you're thinking about tackling issues, if you tackle something that you're passionate about, something that you have an interest in. Um, I really like fishing, so if I had a, if I had a, um, a something to focus, I'd try and make the waterways around Shepherd and better habitat for those fish. Yeah, so ta tackle something you're interested in, something that you enjoy. That's probably the easiest way to do something. How did your leadership when young set, set you up for what you're doing today? Um, growing up, I, I moved around. I went to four different high schools um, through metro and country areas. I went to schools where there was 3,000 kids. I uh, went to a school where there was 100 kids and um, I got to meet heaps of different people through, throughout that period. Um, worked and played different areas like different sports and with different types of leaders. I um, always um, enjoyed learning things from them and also when it was my turn to step up and captain the footy team I got to do that. Um, yeah I guess just being um, aware that 
when you make a mistake, that it's, it's not something you should be worried about, it's just something you can learn from. What would a young person study and do to do what you do? Um, there's nothing really you have to study in sort of high school and that. Obviously legal studies can help and get you a little bit of an understanding in relation to uh, policing, but really at high school, you just finish high school, make sure you don't get in trouble with police. Um, have an interest that's community minded, so if you're doing some volunteer work somewhere, um, and if you do get a part time job, have it somewhere where you're doing a bit of customer service. We all, police cry for uh, cry out for people with customer service skills and to have a good mindset towards building a better community. Hello, I'm Ross McPherson, Executive Chairman of the McPherson Media Group, based here in Shepparton. We publish a number of uh, newspapers in Northern Victoria, magazines um, in print and online, and, uh, and conduct a number of events. I had a mixed career of law and journalism before coming back to the company, which had been run by my family for some five generations. My father and my grandfather before him were heavily involved in community affairs and, and they believed that it was important for us to give back to the community which had been very kind to us. Um, I'm sure they've had an influence on my approach to the community. And one of my community hats is as patron of Fairly Leadership, which I helped establish uh, some 25 years ago. Coincidentally, it was after the community was rebuilding following the last recession we had back in the early 1990s. And that recession proved to be a catalyst for a range of positive initiatives, many of which um, are still visible today, and Fairly Leadership is one of those. We now have well over 500 Fairly Fellows contributing to their communities in ways that probably wouldn't have happened otherwise. And my guess is that the current COVID crisis and the economic issues and challenges that inevitably will follow will produce a similar sort of, um, uh, if you like, range of new initiatives and people will be um, looking at ways in which they can adapt and do things in, in, in more interesting and more efficient ways. Some people are inclined, I think, in times of difficulty to, to withdraw and blame their circumstances, but the inclination of most of us is to adapt to these changing circumstances. And we know from uh, 6,000 years of recorded history anyway that um, opportunity always follows difficulty. That recession then is followed by progression and populist upheaval is usually followed by periods of stability. Back in the Dark Ages and uh, the Black Death in Europe, uh, we saw the flourishing of art and science and literature and education in the period of the Renaissance. That's how history tends to go up and down as it has for 6,000 years. So how do we make the most of the situation now? I've observed, um, looking at leadership and, and a, a range of leaders over the years, that they all share two or three common elements. The first and most important is that they have a vision for the cause or the uh, goal or project that um, that uh, they're chasing, if you like. And, th and then they have a, a degree of focus that stops them getting distracted by other things and concentrating on, on what that goal is and, and pursuing it. And they usually have a degree of energy that, that moves them towards that desired result, that creates action. And those three elements seem to be common amongst many, many great leaders. So I don't think leadership itself is that complex. Um, they come in all shapes and sizes. And if you add to those two or three elements of leadership, um, the golden rule that you treat other people as you like to be treated yourself, you'll have no trouble encouraging and coaxing people to come along with you on your leadership journey. Um, I think it's worth, while you're talking over the next day or so about the great issues facing us not only locally but globally and, and, and nationally 
uh, such as climate change and alleviating poverty and educational opportunity that you also give thought to things that you are truly passionate about rather than causes that you think you should be pursuing because if you're passionate about it that's what will get you out of bed and uh, ready for action uh, and move you towards your goal much more quickly. Um, I think another thing we, useful thing we can do during this sort of lockdown period is accelerate our learning, not just about your studies, but about life and, and leadership. And there are really only two ways to learn. One's your own experience and the other's other people's experience. With our own experience, it's useful to periodically reflect on how we're building that experience, how we're learning from our mistakes and not repeating them. And, and, and uh, some people will have 30 years of valuable experience building on it year after year. And there are other people who have one year's experience 30 times. And you don't want to be in that category. Um, so I think there's never been a better time to digest and access and devour other people's experience because most of the great leaders in the world and in fact people who have excelled in so many fields of human endeavour have written books about how they did it and they're easily accessible. Many are free on the internet. Those published more recently are available at uh, your library and school library. Um, so I think being aware of how you're using your time usefully is is part of the key to progressing quickly towards the, the, the goals that you want to achieve. And one of those is um, the, the, the distractions provided by mobile devices, which are deliberately designed these days with social media to give us the impression uh, that we're learning and connecting with people, but they're addictive. And you sit down at the end of the day and say, what did I achieve? And I think Reflecting on that uh, is a useful check, if you like, to make sure that you're using your time, valuable time, to enrich your mind and spirit, that you're um, not just spending time reading and learning, but investing in your friendships and your family. And as the lockdown, as we move out of lockdown and the social movement becomes easier, consider extending your network and investing in mentor relationships and not being afraid to ask people for help. You'll be surprised how many people will help you in your journey if only you ask. So I hope those are some useful thoughts. So best of luck with your summit. Thank you. Hi, I'm Rebecca Wollstonecroft. I'm the CEO of MBNN, a local business in Shepparton that employs about 40 people. And I've also had some board roles, including the chairperson at Golden Valley Health. What gives me optimism is that people ultimately want others to do well. And there might be some things that get in the way of that sometimes, but I think if we can tap into the reasons for that and that deep seated belief that things could be improved and they want them to be improved, then I think they can be. And so that's really what gives me optimism. I think the big issues that young leaders need to step up to include some really important ones such as climate change and a need to do something more, far more than what we've been doing. I think we need to ensure equity of access to the basic things in life, such as health, education, transportation. We need to give everyone equal opportunity to do well. And I think the last thing that needs to be really reconsidered is education and how we educate our young people, because I don't believe that the current system is engaging and rewarding enough for the people within it that they wish to continue on that journey. Uh, I was really set up, I think, in my leadership journey from my parents, really, who gave me this value of believing in education, believing in bettering yourself so that you can be independent and a contributor to society. And that that contribution comes in a variety of ways and what those ways are really up to you. And I think, therefore, they helped me be surrounded by people who encouraged me and then that set me on a pathway to seek out others who wanted to encourage me and to make sure that I was successful in my endeavours. And ultimately, I think the lesson in all of that is to seek out people who make you feel good about yourself and want you to do well and to push you um, into being better than you are. So I think that's where the leadership came from when I was a young person. 
And um, I guess if you wanted to do what I do, well, really, you, you're going to set yourself up to um, going off to university. You do a Bachelor of Commerce and then I became a chartered accountant. And then from there, I discovered a love for understanding how organisations worked and how they could be effective, which all centred around leadership. And that was all about reading, lots and lots of reading and then seeking people out who knew lots more about it than I did and having really robust conversations about how you make those things a reality in life. So that was the journey for me. I wish you all uh, a great success at your summit. What makes you optimistic? Oh, so much. The sunshine, the flowers, my family who are with me here while I'm doing this recording. Um, people, uh, the world, us working together. Um, together everyone achieves more. The opportunities out there, innovation, um, being surrounded by amazing people who are doing amazing things. What are the big issues needing young leaders to step up? Look, um, I think young leaders need to be passionate. I think we all need to recognise that you know, once upon a time, we all thought that the government was responsible for making an impact on humanity and for really helping us make the world a better place. But I think now it's really evident that we all have a role to play. We all have a part to play in that. And it's all about us really doing our part to make the world, the planet, humanity better. How did your leadership when young set you up for what you are doing today? Wow, so I mean, I've always had a thirst for learning and a thirst for knowledge, and I think that's a big part. I've always loved people. So I think I run a business community now where we connect businesses who have common interests, and we're all about using profit as a force for good. Um, you know, I was in, always involved in leadership programs when I was at school. I was involved in lots of drama. I loved acting. I don't know if you can tell. Um, and I, I loved um, going in programs and pushing myself and um, stretching myself and creating opportunities that, that would allow me to keep improving and be better. So for me, um, you know, really it's about involving yourself and giving yourself the opportunity. And it doesn't matter if you're chosen or not chosen, it's part of the learning process. And it's just about keep pushing yourself to, you know, be better and keep striving to, you know, make those little continuous improvements in yourself and the people around you. What would a young person study and do to do what you do? Well, as I said, I run a business community um, and for me, it's all about igniting the passion in someone and believing in them when they don't necessarily believe in themselves. So I first studied teaching and I worked as a teacher and I loved it. And for me, a teacher's role is so critical in society. It's all about how do you make kids feel amazing about themselves, finding that absolute, those little gems of strength in them that that make them feel amazing and make them feel on top of the universe, like they can achieve anything. Um, and for me, I've just kept that passion going through my business career. It's about believing in people when they don't necessarily believe in themselves and helping them find their passion and helping direct them and support them in being the best they can be. So thank you so much for involving Symphony 7 in the Nelson Mandela Youth Leadership Summit. We are honored and thrilled. We think the youth are definitely our future and we're absolutely thrilled to be involved. What makes you optimistic? Hello all, it's Natalie Fung here, CFO of Yarra Valley Water. What makes me optimistic is surrounding myself with people who have a positive view of the future. Optimism is a choice. It's a choice of whether you, you see the world as an upside or a downside. This pandemic we are facing brings about a whole heap of new opportunities. It's not a matter of survival, it's a matter of thriving. It's not a failure, it is certainly more of a learning. And it's not a challenge, it brings about lots of opportunities. So together we can speak this positive future into existence. And to be successful as a leader today, it really is about surrounding yourself with positive voices. Even better if it's your own. What are the big issues needing young leaders to step up? 
Well, there are many issues for us to tackle. And what I find really helpful are the sustainable development goals, which um, serve as a reminder really of what's important to us as a human race. There are 17 uh, sustainable development goals and it kind of acts as a blueprint for me in terms of guiding us towards a, a better future, a more sustainable um, future for all of us. And businesses now are having to think beyond just the financials. So they're having to think about the decisions and the choices that they're making and really justifying what value they are creating in an economic and environmental and a social sense. So um, Australia is currently ranked 38th of around 162 countries around the world with its progress on the sustainable development goals. And there's certainly more work that can be done. Some of the areas of challenge include the all important topic of climate change. And we know that there certainly is more that can be done by businesses to contribute towards a much more energy efficient, uh, environmentally friendly, a more sustainable uh, world. And uh, what policies do we need to be able to support that in our country? Then there's the all important topic of gender equality as well. We know that uh, more diverse voices at the table, having greater women participate and influence in decision making and choices that businesses and organisations make in leadership roles can make a difference. Uh, good for people, good for performance and good for planet. And last but not least in my mind, there is one other area which is important for us at the moment and that is the topic of responsible consumption and production. It's something that we all as consumers in our everyday lives can influence and it's something that businesses need to be thinking about when it comes to what they bring to the table. How did your young leadership set you up for what you are doing today? Yes, that's a great question. I've always been a bit of a risk taker, so uh, embracing the opportunities and having the breadth of roles uh, in my career has really put me in good stead for where I am today. So, you know, I really encourage you to get out there and get some real experience out in industry. And knowing what your purpose is in all of that is super important. Some of the greatest mentors and leaders that I've ever worked for have taught me one thing, and that is that the technical stuff you can always learn, and it's not the technical stuff that really drives success. What it is, is actually your values, and also understanding why you get out of bed each day. What is your purpose, and what do you survive for? And um, starting out in industry for me was uh, really not a matter of being at my computer each day. It was about getting out uh, and being out in the field. So really like a human sponge. Um, I walked the factory floors to learn where products were made and how they were made. I learned about the supply chain uh, and how it got from the factory through to uh, the table in our household. And also being out in the shop front, listening to customers and staff out, um, you know, serving the community. So that's all really important because it's like uh, collecting data. When you've got all this insight, you can then step back from it and really make some choices around how can I make things better. What would a young person study and need to do what you do? So finance leaders of today have typically come from grassroots business, commerce and accounting uh, degrees. What I would say though in today's world is that leaders actually um, benefit immensely from real life experiences and so it's the combination of those education um, foundations and discipline complemented with those experiences out in industry uh, which really put us in good stead uh, to lead our organisations. And the CFOs of today really um, are not just about being commercially savvy or financially focused. It really is also about being strategic, uh, being able to be a catalyst and influence different outcomes uh, across the business. And it's uh, something that requires great communication skills and people skills. And so you need to be able to be in a mindset of stepping away from your office and being a business partner to the organisation, having a seat and a voice at the table. But also, um, importantly, sustainability has to be on the agenda because investors, shareholders, uh, customers and community, they're demanding something different these days. And it's not just about the profits or the dividends, uh, it really is about what other value are we generating for the environment and society and the community um, as well. 
most importantly in all of that, it's to be true to yourself. So what I found really helpful is to stay human and be authentic in your leadership. If you can be yourself throughout all of this and stay true to your passion and what your values say, then it will put you in great stead. Good morning and welcome. My name is John Cortese. I'm principal of Notre Dame College. I thank you for the opportunity of saying a few words in Shepparton's third Nelson Mandela Youth Leadership Summit. I think the theme this time is brilliant. The theme young people leading with optimism through this pandemic and beyond. And we all need to go and live a life where we're going to challenge ourselves to do a great job as leaders. I was asked what makes me optimistic. I believe that all people have good things in them. I believe that in a crisis, we have a challenge to seek improvement, to do things better personally, and to learn something new. And I also have a belief that in reality, we're going to do things better and things will work out eventually. I was also asked what are the big issues that young leaders are going to face today? There is no doubt that the big issues are going to be around mental health and how we address that. Social media, the respect that people have in society, the caring for others and the caring for the environment and setting goals that are going to make your life better and make the life of the people in the world generally better. How did leadership when I was a young man, how did it help me to become what I am today? And I would say without doubt, the greatest opportunity that I had was that I had great mentors as a young man. They challenged me to try new things. And some of the challenges they threw my way were scary, but they believed that I was capable of doing it. So they had faith in my ability and I gave it a go. And I was supported magnificently by the mentors, whether I succeeded or failed. So be on the lookout for great mentors and have a yes mentality. That means accept challenges that have thrown you away and try your hardest to meet those challenges. And finally, I was asked, as a young person today, what are the things that people need to do? I would say the most important thing that you've got that you need to do is work out what you're passionate about. Work out what you love doing, work out what you like being involved in. And then when you've decided that, Go and work really hard to make sure you do the very best that you can in that role. And at all times, seek guidance, seek help. And if you do that, you'll end up realising that you don't work a day in your life. You're just doing something that you're passionate about, that you love, and your life is going to be one glorious life. I wish you well through this summit. I wish you well through life in general. And I ask you to try your hardest at everything that you do. And whenever there comes a little bit of a hurdle, a little bit of a trip up in your way, give it your best shot to overcome it and you'll find you have a magnificent life. Have a great day. Enjoy life. What makes you optimistic? What makes me optimistic is that I believe that as a society we will get through what's happening uh, at the moment with COVID. I think we'll find a way through and I think things will work out in the end. What are the big issues needing young leaders to step up? Oh, I think the environment, uh, all things around sustainability, around how they choose people to lead them in society. Um, and I think they need to become a lot more aware of these things and to educate themselves so that they can make um, the right choices for themselves as they get older and older. Um, and, um, and that's through education and awareness. Um, um, yeah, I think that's what they should be thinking about and focusing on. How did your leadership, when young, set you up for what you are doing today? Um, I think there was a while when I wasn't so leadership focus when I was younger and then as I got a little bit older I just I just became aware of a lot of things and I just became quite passionate about things that were happening in my my school my university and my life and uh, I just learned a lot of stuff 
and in doing that it made me uh, I suppose more equipped to take on leadership roles within the businesses that I went into when I was younger and start my own business then as well. Um, I've had a couple of businesses so I think my, uh, my educating myself and raising my own awareness and learning more when I was younger probably set me up for what I'm doing now. What would a young person have to study and do to do what you do? Um, I just, I don't know. I think you've got to learn lots of stuff. You have to have a broad education in life to, to do things um, more generally. But I would say if you're going to focus on something and hone in on something, make sure it's something that you love and something that matters. Um, and then make it matter for you and for the rest of the world. Hi, it's Sam Birrell, CEO of the Committee for Greater Shepparton. I've been asked to talk about what makes me optimistic and a bit about my leadership journey. Uh, I'm optimistic because although we're going through some difficult times with a pandemic and some, um, uh, some confusion around the world in terms of, um, in terms of leadership and order, uh, we've been through these times before and we have succeeded. In some cases, we've come out uh, better than we have and the crisis has helped us define who we are as a world. And I look at uh, World War I and the Spanish flu pandemic, we came through those. Uh, and World War II, for example, was a terrible crisis last century, but it led to the, to the uh, formation of the United Nations, which has been a positive for, for human interaction around the world. Uh, as far as my own leadership journey, um, I got involved in community organisations, particularly the Shepherd and Art Festival, Arts Festival, and was mentored by uh, many uh, members of the community. Uh, I participated in the Fairly Leadership Program in 2013, which was a great pivot, a great, um, something that helped me understand the region that I live in better and also uh, understand myself. Uh, and then two years later in 2015, I started an MBA at La Trobe University and graduated uh, three years later. That was uh, great learnings and helps me to, um, with the skills, learnings uh, and ability to research that helps me in my job now. Uh, so as far as young people, um, get involved in community organisations, be prepared to start at the bottom, um, be, be open to leadership programs and, um, and, and different leadership programs that help you understand the region that you live in and consistent education, whether it be university or other further education, but continue to challenge yourself, um, whether it be um, understanding new pieces of art, new philosophies, new readings. Uh, but uh, that really helps you to move to where you need to be in terms of a thinking person uh, that can push all of us forward. So thanks and good luck for your program. Uh, g'day everyone. Thanks so much uh, for tuning in today uh, to this amazing event. Congratulations to Victor and to Rashidi for pulling this together and all the rest of the team. You've got some amazing speakers, so soak it all up. Uh, young people leading with optimism through the pandemic and beyond. Um, if you've turned up to this, you're already leading, you're already interested. Congratulations. Well done. Uh, the guys have sent me some questions. So um, what makes me optimistic? Uh, to be honest, kids today make me optimistic. They're so much better, so much more engaged than when I was a kid. Um, people tell you it was better in the old days, old days. that is bullshit. Um, you guys are amazing and the things that kids are doing now under the pressures that they are under is phenomenal. Uh, you know, we have young people coming through in our business and I just, I can't begin to believe the capability and the careful and considered way they go about their decision making. Um, next question, what are the big issues needed uh, young leaders to step up? Um, that's a big question and, and maybe I'd rephrase that and I'd say at, at an early stage of your leadership, the, the thing that you need to worry about most is making sure you've got your foundations right. You know, that you, you've got your, your moral compass, you understand your right and wrong you're sure with yourself and that you're doing things on a small scale that are right 
And then the last thing is putting your hand up for something, for anything, where you're trying out your leadership. You don't have to know anything about it. No leader for the first time when they step out knows what they're doing. So it's about putting your hand up for the first time to try. And as you develop your leadership skills and you become more comfortable with who you are in your own skin and what's right and wrong, and you really need to focus on that, if you focus on those things, forget about the self-promotion and all the other leadership stuff. If you've got that moral compass stuff right, as life goes on, people will seek you out because they know you're solid on that and they will want to hear from you about that. What would a young person study today if uh, they wanted to do what I do? Look, my advice about what you should study is find the thing that you are interested in and follow that with passion. Um, you know, somebody that has chosen a difficult to get into a narrow field, but is the best at it, will have a highly successful and productive life. If you choose the thing that maybe is popular or you think that there is the way of the future because that's where the jobs are, but you're not interested in it, it's a waste of your time and capability and capacity. You've got this great opportunity now, pick the thing you're passionate about, you're interested in, and be the best at that. That will allow you to be the most persuasive. And you can influence a whole range of worldwide things from almost any position. I run the most boring business, maybe anywhere. We wash sheets and towels for hospitals and laundries and things like that. I mean, it is the most unsexy business in the world. Having said that, it's given me the chance. We employ 320 people. We've been able to be really involved in multiculturalism. We've been able to be involved in Indigenous affairs. I'm involved in community leadership. So really, I have just followed something I'm interested in, which is running businesses, and that has given me the opportunity. So um, that would be my advice to you. So listen up today, guys. Enjoy all the great speakers. I'm on Facebook. Um, I'm on LinkedIn. If you ever want to chat about anything more or talk more about what I've done today, uh, get in touch with me and I'm happy to chat. Hi, I'm Wendy Lovell, the member for Northern Victoria Region, and I'd like to congratulate all of you on participating in the third Nelson Mandela Leadership Summit. Leadership qualities are not something that we're naturally born with, but they are something that can be fostered in people. I was lucky to have the example of really great parents who taught me that if I wanted to live in a good community, I had to contribute to making that place a good community. My parents were leaders in business and community service, and I followed them into business and community service. I was that person on every fundraising committee, the person who advocated to politicians for better services and infrastructure in our town. From there, I progressed to a career in politics, to being the politician who actually made things happen. I've been fortunate to have a really great career and to have the honour of being a minister in government a position that gives you the opportunity to really make a difference to people's lives. One of the things that I implemented as Housing Minister was a policy to have youth foyers in Victoria. We have one of those here in Greater Shepparton. These are facilities that actually change young people's lives. They give young people who are homeless, who are couch surfing, who are disengaged with education, the opportunity to have stable housing, to re-engage with their education and to build a better life for themselves. And I'm really proud of the achievements of our youth foyers, particularly the one here in Greater Shepparton that has given so many of our young people the opportunity to build a better life for themselves. But we don't only need leaders in politics, we need leaders at all levels of our community, in our sporting groups, our community service, our cultural groups, there are many opportunities to be leaders in Greater Shepparton. And as we come out of this global pandemic caused by COVID-19, there will be lots of opportunities to help our economy recover in Greater Shepparton as well. So we will need many leaders. I'm hoping that from you participating in today's Nelson Mandela Summit, that you will learn some of the skills that will enable you to be one of those leaders that not only helps us to recover from the pandemic, but who also goes on to make Greater Shepparton an even greater place to live. Thank you very much and good luck with the summit.
So I guess the question is, what makes a good leader? Well, my opinion, the first thing is respect. I think you've got to give respect to the people with whom you're dealing, and in turn, that respect will come back to you. If you've got respect and you include people around you, you're then entitled to ask the questions, sometimes the hard questions, that have got to be asked. And it is in that vein that you will, you will do bigger things for the community. But respect, being involved, seeking other people's advice, seeking other people's opinions. It's very good to take a team approach when you're looking at community and in fact worldwide things such as the uh, climate emergency and the environment problems that we've got at the moment. So I wish you well in the summit. I hope it goes well and, uh, and stay safe.